Sine, cosine and the tangent function are the first thing most people come across when they start learning about trigonometry, usually paired with the acronym SOCATOA in order to recall the relationship between these functions and the sides of a right triangle. But little emphasis is actually put on where these relationships come from. Let's explore this. To begin with, we need to understand exactly what these relationships mean. What exactly is sine? To answer this, let's start with two similar triangles. That is, two triangles with different length sides, but the same angles. To make that clear, you can see here our smaller triangle can be scaled exactly into our larger one. The angles are identical between them. Therefore, we can conclude that there's some number that links their sides. Perhaps one triangle has sides that are twice the length of the other. We can express this as the hypotenuse of one triangle divided by the hypotenuse of the other being equal to the adjacent of one triangle divided by the adjacent of the other, and so on for the opposite. From this, we can rearrange to conclude that, assuming your triangles have the same angles, the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse is the same between them. We call this ratio sine of a given angle theta. This same argument also applies to the cosine and tangent functions. Now let's investigate how to actually find sine for a given angle. Firstly, let's take a square with side lengths 1. Now let's split this square into two right angled triangles. Notice that we split the right angles in half meaning we can determine that this triangle has two 45 degree angles and one 90 degree angle. Now, we use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse of this triangle. 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2, so the hypotenuse has the length square root of 2. Now we can recall our Sokotoa relationships and find the result of each function for an angle of 45 degrees. For sine, the angle is 45 degrees, the opposite is 1, and the hypotenuse is the square root of 2. This is an example of a so-called exact value result. There's a few similar examples like this, but it's not a method we can use to determine the value of this function for every possible result. To do that, we need to start with our Sokotoa equations again. Let's take the sine equation and multiply through by the hypotenuse so that we can have one side of the triangle on the right-hand side. We can now repeat this with the cosine equation. Notice that both expressions now have our function multiplied by the hypotenuse of our triangle on the left hand side. If we could find a way to make the hypotenuse equal to 1, the equation would simplify down to have our sine and cosine functions on the left hand side, and a side of our triangle on the other, the opposite for sine, and the adjacent for cosine. To do this, start by drawing a line of length 1. Next, rotate this line round a fixed point, creating a circle with radius 1. If we use the radius as the hypotenuse of our triangle, then we can find a right triangle with hypotenuse 1 for every angle. Now that we've done this, we just need to draw a triangle for any given angle in this circle in order to get the value of sine and cosine. Using a computer makes this much simpler. You can see the graphs of our equations forming with the lengths of each side of our triangle building up the graphs. This also explains why sine and cosine repeat after 360 degrees. We effectively rotate round our circle and then start again.